everyone, it's Lorelai. It's been a few days of me messing around with Pixel Maker MV, and I think it's time to make another devlog. This is my second one. I haven't posted the first one yet, so if you left some comments, I'm sorry, I, I didn't see them when I'm recording this. <laughs> Um, again, I'm going to record a couple of these before posting them just in case I uh, I give up. <laughs> it would be really embarrassing to have a few episodes and then and then stop. So we're going to see if I can keep up the momentum. So this devlog, I just want to show you guys what I've been up to. As you can see, I have this little map here. I have my character and I have a slime. And I'm really excited with this progress. <laughs> it doesn't seem like much, but unlike RPG Maker, you do have to actually program each one of these. Luckily, Pixel Maker does make the programming easy. I ended up deciding on a 32 by 32 pixel dimension instead of 16 by 16 because the engine actually hated using 16 by 16 auto tiles, and I'll get to that in a second. But the first thing I did after, after finally deciding how I'm gonna do it, how I'm gonna make the game, I opened up all of the time fantasy tile sets that I have that I bought from Itch, and I organized them into tile sets for my first region. And if you remember from my first devlog, the first area is a cave. So I edited together some auto tiles that could work for a cave. We have the regular auto tile here, but then we've got some, some wood tiles. We have some stone tiles. So I, have, so I have choices, right? I have choices, just in case. Now, Pixel Game Maker MV is not RPG Maker MV, and they do not have inherent auto tile support. But under the plugins section, you can see that there is an official auto tile RPG Maker MV plugin that you can use just by going to add official plugin and uh, auto tile. And by adding that plugin, what you can do is when you go into tiles and you, and you make a new tile, you can go to auto tiles, auto tile RPG Maker MV, and then select what type of auto tile it would be. So the world A1, or the World A2, or Outside A4. Then you simply select the tile set that, that you have, that's an auto tile, and it will do the rest for you. And it works pretty okay, I'd say. There's some spots where it messes up a little bit. Let's see if I can show you. Yeah, so here, uh, for some reason, I don't know, but I can't, um, okay, well, never mind. <laughs> Never mind then. I guess I just had to restart the program. Um, but before it wasn't linking, but for the most part, it works. It works fine. Uh, let me see if I can right click and yep. Yep. So it's, it's kind of automatic. It's great. Auto tiles. Yay. I only plan on using auto tiles for the floors just because it saves a lot of time. <laughs> you can also add some animations to your tiles. I don't have any uh, water tiles right now. That's part of the plot, actually. So <laughs> it would be silly to have a water tile right now, but I might I might put them here if I come back to the cave and there's water maybe at the end. Um, but what you can do is you can select it and then go to animations. Uh, it won't it won't let me here. But let's let's look at this and add your animations here. So pretty easily done, I'd say. And I believe that would be considered um, an A1 tile. I believe that would be an A1 tile. A1 tiles are animated and then A2 are not. That's what I remember. <laughs> I could be wrong. So other than messing around with the auto tiles, I just grabbed everything that might be relevant for this cave and I put them all inside of one big tile sheet. Uh, the cool thing about Pixel Maker MV is that there does not seem to be a size restriction of the tile sheet that you import. Uh, I have two here. I've got the ground stuff and then I've got the stuff stuff <laughs> uh, just so I can use these little collapsible Folders if I wanted to get rid of um, get rid of ground, for example, I might go ahead and separate them even further into more different tile sheets just so I have the ability to uh, collapse and uncollapse at will for 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 more filtering, I guess. But right now, right now, it's whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I did have one issue with the tiles, and that was with these big rocks. So if I put a big rock down. Uh, on the player layer, which I'm going to select this so I can see exactly what's going on. Uh, so that's ground. That is nothing, nothing, nothing. And then here's player. So I'm going to actually drag player here. This is layer one is the player. And I'm going to put a rock 
uh, where the player is. And I this is a new project, actually, uh, because I went through so many iterations. I don't think I have the collision set up yet for this. I do not. So let's let's quickly do that. So just select all walls. And now and now this is collision, right? It's kind of the same as RPG Maker. Okay, so now there's a collision. Um, if I go in here, obviously you can you can tell that uh, I'm going to be on top of it because there's a layer system, right? There's a layer system. So I would go into layer two, scroll back down, and grab uh, the top and put that there. So this is going to be on top of my character. Nothing groundbreaking. We all know how this works. The problem is is that. <laughs> uh, the problem is that. And then also, if I walk in front of it, uh, I get I get clipped off here. That's a big problem when you're doing parallax mapping in RPG Maker. It's a problem when your character sprites are a different size than your background sprites or your object sprites or your grid size, things like that. So um, I know why it's happening, but I wanted to figure out how to avoid that happening. And the answer to that is actually to make this item an object which is good and also it's, it's not good because <laughs> if you have way too many objects in your map, that's going to slow down. That's going to add a, a hefty burden to the processing of your, of your map. So you, you might not want to do that. But for important things, like say a big statue um, that you definitely want in there, you're, you're probably going to have to make it an object. So let me quickly add an object. So I'm going to make a new folder and I'm going to call this uh, objects. Uh, actually, I'm going to call it um, overlay objects. Just so it's more more obvious what the heck I'm doing. I'm going to add a picture under, I believe it's tile sets and yeah, tile to object. And I have these rocks here. You can set the partition. So we've got four by five here. Okay. And it's very, very, very hard to see, but there's a slight blue line here. Even I can't see it. Uh, even zooming in, it's, it's really freaking hard to see. But that's our object. That's our object, our tile to object. And now we simply go into our objects panel here. I'm gonna make a new folder. I'm gonna call this overlay objects. I'm going to add a new object and we're gonna just call it rocks. We're gonna call it rocks. And we need to select an animation, but I totally forgot. <laughs> so after you import the resource, then you have to go into your animations. Let's make yet another folder. Uh, change name to overlay objects. <laughs> Luckily, this is, this is pretty easy. You're just gonna make an animation. You're gonna call it rocks. And we're going to import that image. Manaweed rocks, it's already partitioned for us. Just click okay. Okay, and then we have this screen, and this is the animation screen, which I'm going to go over in another log. But here we have motion, direction, and frame. So for motion, I'm just gonna call this rock one. For direction, I'm gonna choose one of these rocks. So I'm just gonna choose this top left rock. Uh, to actually click it though, you have to go into the frame. So we selected the, the frame here, it's hard to see. <laughs> um, also, I'm in the way, I apologize. And that's it. And we can call this direction one. We can call this static just because it's not going to move. It's just one direction of a rock. And under frame, we can actually do a really cool thing. We can scroll that. Uh, we can make a collision detection in case you have attacks that want to um, attack the rock <laughs> for any reason, right? You can do that. And then we have wall detection. So instead of it being a two by two gridded uh, detection, a wall like in RPG Maker, you can make it so that it's pixel perfect and just drag it around around the rock. Ta-da, very easy. And then there's attack detection, but this rock is not going to be attacking us. I, I, I hope not anyway. <laughs> One thing I did forget is uh, to go back to rocks here and set the origin setting to floor. That is gonna help the engine determine if your character is over or under this rock. And I think that's all we have to do. So let's go back to objects. Let's add a new object again. We're gonna call this rocks. We should really just call it manaweed rocks because technically these rocks are just gonna be in manaweed. They're probably gonna be in other towns too, but for now I'll just call it manaweed rocks. And the object group, so right now we only have player group and enemy group. I'm gonna make another group later, but right now uh, it's gonna be player group. Later I'm going to make a group called 
objects. I'm going to make a group called NPCs. I'm going to make a group called invisible, things like that. Groups, uh, I'm not prepared to explain right now, <laughs> um, but player group is going to be all of the playable characters and then you can set it so that the enemy group reacts the same to everyone in the player group, but not the same to everyone in uh, in an NPC group. You know, so the, the enemy will attack the players, but not the NPCs, for example. Uh, so that's that's the groups. But right now I'm just going to set it as a player group and we're going to add a wall detection for the player. OK, and also the enemies. And I think that's it. Uh, if we want the player to attack the rock, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, actually, no, we're not going to we're not going to attack the rock and we're going to press OK. All right, and then we have this default action the one. We don't have to even change anything here. We can rename it to just static or just rock. Right. We can just call it rock one or just rock. It doesn't matter. And a cool thing with this is actually I might end up renaming this the change name to from Manaweed Rocks to Manaweed Rock one. And then what we can do is go into animations duplicate this motion or well we can duplicate the direction actually it doesn't it doesn't matter whichever one you want to duplicate <laughs> let's just duplicate this one so copy and paste and we can call this rock two and this one is going to be a different kind of rock this one's going to be there let's do that a green rock right so now we have two different rocks in one uh one animation but then under objects we can select which rock we want it to be so that's that's one way of keeping things organized if you want to. So we're just going to keep it as this regular rock here. And something important is to go into basic settings and say not pushed back by other objects. Um, I think for now, maybe maybe I'll keep that unchecked so you can see what happens. <laughs> but there it is. There's our rock. Nothing, nothing fancy here. So let's go into objects and we're going to go to the player layer and we're going to go to overlay objects, rock. And I'm going to put the rock like. And let's see what happens. Now I'm going right through it. <laughs> so I did something wrong, um, but that's good, right? Uh, we're, we're above and we're below the rock and that is ideal. So let me see what I did wrong. Okay, I figured it out. So under object settings, I set it to the player group. Um, it should be an enemy group because the player group is um, the main character. And so I, I think they just weren't seeing it as a wall detection. So I set it to enemy for now, but then later it was going to, it's gonna be an item, right? Or uh, an overlay object or something. Another type of group that's not an enemy group. Uh, but if we set it to enemy and press play, we can push the rock, yay! And we can go above the rock, although right now it's, it's pushing it, so you can't really see. <laughs> You can push that around. If I turn off the push and press play, then I can go above and below it. Well, the below is not really working very well because of the wall wall collision. So let me let me fix that. So it's this one. We're going to hide the regular collision uh, wall collision. I think I think this is right. I might be I might be wrong here. I might be going crazy here. Uh, let's see if it's the wall. We can go behind it. We can. Wonderful. Wonderful. OK, so. So now we've fixed it. Now we can go above and below it. Unlike this rock, this tile, uh, we cannot. Yay. <laughs> so I did a whole bunch of other stuff, but I think that's enough for this first devlog. I can't wait to get further into the game and I can't wait to show you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.